So we're so glad to have you on the show. Thank you. Megan from the District Attorney's Office. And what's your actual title? Director of Victim Services. Okay. And we'll get into more of what that means and what she does in just a little bit. This is Servings, Kitchen with a Cause. So we're talking with people who help the public. They have organizations, charities. And uh, we're going to be talking to Megan today. Um, now, she does not know what we're cooking. So we're about to reveal that to her right now. The ingredients have been covered since before you got here, so you have mm -hmm. no idea. No, no idea. No clue. This is what we call the beach towel of deception. Ah. Uh, yeah. So Very nice. Are you ready? Uh, as ready as I'll ever be. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready because I'm kind of going out on a limb here and, and going into uncharted territory mm. with this recipe. Testing my Both skills? Of these. We're doing okay. two recipes, so I'm going to rely on you. Here we go. What do you think we're cooking? Two recipes. Um, some sort of Italian uh, dish and a chocolate chip cookie type dessert. You got them all mixed in, so it's a yeah, little confusing. It makes it, it, makes it a little difficult. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll tell you what we're doing. The first recipe is District Attorney Neapolitan Pizza. Oh, yeah, very like that. nice. Very clever. Yes. And so I couldn't be clever that clever twice in a row so sure the second one is district attorney neapolitan cookies <laughs> <laughs> so we're doing pizza and cookies okay which means we have to make two doughs wow baking, okay baking and that is not my forte hey me either <laughs> dang it <laughs> i was hoping she was a baker but, you know, I'm good at improvising well, good. in the kitchen. That's good. one of my main skills. So, so you know, we'll if, just we'll make the, it work. If this goes bad, I, I'm going to blame it on you. I just want to Okay, go that's fine. All right, cool. Yeah. So we'll be right back. We're going to reset, and we're going to get started with the cookie dough. Okay. I am so happy that I'm almost in tears right now because we finally have a guest that is closer to my height. I'm so happy right That's now. true, yes, it's nice. <laughs> Everybody else I'm like, Looking can you get on down. a stool or something? Yeah. All right, so we have softened butter and we're supposed to beat that with some sugar. Yes, right? sir, mm-hmm. All right, so that is a cup of butter. So we'll put that Stop. in the bowl. And how much sugar are we supposed to use over there? One cup. One cup. So equal parts butter and sugar. Oh my gosh. Sounds good to me already. <laughs> we'll just eat that. <laughs> All right. Pour that in there. And now we get to use old Cyclops here. Beat it until creamy. All right. I'll do part of it and you can do part of it. Let me okay. turn it down. I don't want to yeah. hurt anybody. You can tell by my technique that I'm not used to doing this. There's a rhythm there. <laughs> here, here, let's see you do it. Come on. Well. Yeah, it. Yeah, it's pretty fast. The dog wants to help. Yeah. So, yeah is that what it's supposed to look like? Uh, yeah, that's mixed well enough. It's, it's well beaten. We'll just beaten. have to get it off of yeah, the thing. Yeah, let me yeah. get a wooden spoon too. We'll need one of those probably. Awesome. I already got myself. <laughs> that's why they wear aprons. God, I, I thought have, it was I just brought for, one. I thought it was for fashion. <laughs> Not actually, supposed to wear the recipe. It's actually but. for something. Wow. Get rid Alrighty. of that. All right. What is step two? You have the directions uh, and then over there. Beat in the eggs one at a time, which would be two eggs. So, <laughs> which we we probably can do that by hand if you have a hand whisk, because that way we don't, you know. That's. I have a hand whisk. All right, I just have to find it. Here it is. Hey, hop down, hop down. <laughs> Feel free to yell. All right, I'll let you handle the eggs. Do the, Okay, yeah, you can do the eggs. <laughs> Never I'm, mind. I'm so good at you cracking meant, eggs. You though. meant you wanted to do the eggs. I yeah. should have picked up on that. Yeah, I'm a great egg cracker. Let's see what we can get out of there. Oh, it's an egg. 
And you go. Okay. There's one. I said one at a time, mm -hmm. right? Sure did. Are you are you a direction follower or are you, are you gonna try that out with this? I try to follow directions. <laughs> It okay, doesn't always work out. One. It's not because I'm a rebel or anything. It's just because I have a bad attention span. Hey, squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> what happened over there? Is that a noise? All right. That, that looks amazing. In another bowl, we're supposed to mix the flour, baking powder, and salt after okay. we add the vanilla extract. So how much vanilla extract is that? Two teaspoons. I think we're doing good so far. Yeah. Only you have gotten dirty so far, so I'm yeah. I'm fine with that. Well, that's typical for me in the kitchen, yeah. actually. So. Just one of those. Two. Two. Yeah. The more, the merrier. Here we go. Awesome. I'm so glad you're here. Me too. Okay. And then we're in another bowl, you said, mm -hmm. we're which, doing the dry ingredients, which includes some flour, right? Four cups. So okay. I think we should use the bigger bowl, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, let's just go with that. Hey, throw me that flour. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very professional situation we got going on here. Okay. There we go. We got flour. All purpose flour. Boom. Do we put all the flour in there? It's yeah, okay, just start so. with the four cups of flour and okay. then we'll add the other things, which is salt. One. Oh. Oh. Powder. Two. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I'm glad we used the bigger bowl. Uh, does anybody want to buy a puppy? It's another assistant in here in the yeah. kitchen today. <laughs> as long as you stay over there. She heard me. And she's trying to get over here. Look at that. You see that? <laughs> that was four. Okay, if you want to get the salt, I'll go ahead and put in the baking powder while you're getting the salt. Got it. Which is here. Two teaspoons of baking powder. So let me off. How much use. salt is it? A half a teaspoon. I just, you know, sometimes when I'm baking, which is very rare, want, see, want. it's like, it's like, <laughs> does a half a teaspoon in four cups of flour really make a difference? Um, I think Martha Stewart would say yes. Yeah, she's a felon. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to listen good to point. felons. Good point. <laughs> and she's got a show with Snoop Dogg now, so. Which is, yeah. I mean, interesting. Nice. How much Here we go. credibility does she have anymore? You already added the baking yeah, powder? Yeah, so if we just have like a fork, or that'll work, probably just to mix all this in. Okay. And. Okay. We're supposed to gradually add this dry ingredients to the wet ingredients. To the wet. Yes. We slowly added scoops of flour to the wet ingredients and stirred them until it got too thick. It was time to get dirty. We did it the old fashioned way and mixed in the remaining flour with our hands. Well, Megan did. Okay, so there we go. That's pretty much done. Good deal. So three right, parts. So huh? three parts. I'm not sure exactly how to do that perfectly evenly, but Thirds. We'll work it out here. So I could be, you know, yeah, somewhat, somewhat even. There we go. That looks good. All right, so a separate bowl. We're supposed to put. Um, we need the red food coloring for one section and we need to melt the chocolate to add to All right. the next section. I will let you handle the red food coloring and I'll go melt the chocolate. Okay.
We have melted the chocolate. She's incorporating it right now. Uh, we have our red dough over there with the red food coloring. And the recipe tells us to break each one of these individual three up into four other dough balls. So it's 12 total. That is 12. So we've got the red completely done. The white over here, we're gonna saran wrap. And then once the chocolate brown comes out, we're gonna break it up, saran wrap it. We're gonna get them in the refrigerator for one to two hours, basically. And then we're gonna start the pizza dough. And before we go, let mm -hmm. me ask you something. Sure. Uh, what do you do? I'm sure the people wanna know. Um, yeah. What the heck do you do? Well, um, I work with victims of crime every day. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, we wear a lot of hats as victim advocates in um, the prosecution office, but basically we walk people through the criminal justice process from start to finish mm -hmm. and help them get whatever resources they need and access their rights as crime victims, which they do have rights mm -hmm. um, statute, statutorily, you know, we have to fulfill those obligations, so. Yeah, I know that a lot of people think about uh, people who are accused of crimes have rights. Exactly. And they're probably not familiar with the fact that victims have rights as well. Yes, and that's one of the things that I say every time I'm talking to one is, you know, a victim on a new case is just like people hear defendants' rights, mm -hmm. you have rights too as the named victim in the case. Right. Um, and it's my job to make sure you know those things mm -hmm. and kind of go over that with them and provide them with literature that spells it out so that they know, hey, I didn't even realize I had this option right. or this ability, so, yeah. So you ha you're dealing with people who have been uh, hurt in some way or uh, are, is this like robberies and that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. any, any felony crime that occurs in the county comes through our office if there's, okay. if there's a case to be prosecuted and a lot of people think of like crime victims, somebody that's been a victim of a violent crime or mm -hmm. a theft, but there's, you know, it encompasses all things in between. Identity fraud, you wouldn't mm -hmm. think that somebody would be, um, you know, that shaken up by different kinds of crimes, but sometimes right. it, any this disruption of your life and realizing yeah. like there's been an injustice here yep. and what do we do about it? We help them access resources, so yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I had my car broken into once and you know, you think, oh, there's someone broke in your car, but you feel violated. Yes. It's like somebody came into my space and stole my stuff. Mm -hmm. It's it's a it's a very weird feeling. Yes, and it does it does have an effect on, especially, the, just the personal safety aspect. Mm -hmm. Even having your identity, like I said, ID fraud. That's something that you would think wouldn't have the same impact as your personal space, but the idea that somebody has access to your information and what else are they capable of and mm -hmm. will there be more. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's something that people don't realize how it has an effect on you until you're in that situation. Right. And one of the hardest things that we have to tell people is that we, I mean, we can't really right this wrong. Mm -hmm. Obviously the justice system isn't perfect, but right. we do what we can to get some sort of favorable outcome where the victim feels like they've had a voice, they've had a chance to participate to whatever extent they want to, mm -hmm. and that um, they've helped us hold this person accountable so that we can protect the greater community as a right. whole as well. Right. So. So she has a very important job uh, and she does it well. She, how long have you been there? Uh, about three and a half years. Three and a half years. Yeah. So. And hopefully you'll be there for a long time because yes. you're doing a great job. Thank you. Uh, so we're going to get this dough into the refrigerator and start the pizza dough right after this. Now it's time to make pizza dough. Mm -hmm. Now by the ingredient list and the, the directions, this should be a lot easier. It appears, yes. <laughs> it appears. <laughs> uh, we'll see how that goes. So we have to start with yeast in a cup and a half of 70 degree water. So if you want to pour that in there. It said to follow the instructions on the back of the packet, but right. there's really not any, so I'm just gonna pour it in. Go for it. <laughs> So we'll let that do its thing for about five minutes or so. And uh, the other ingredients that we will need will require probably a bowl. That bowl, yes. Um, 
freshly washed from and our get, cookie adventure. Here's the cup again. Okay, so we're doing four and a half cups of flour this time. Oh, a half so. cup more. Please don't spill it. Like you did? Exactly <laughs> like I did. Oh. Still a little wet down in there. Yeah. Fast forward this. Do you like? <laughs> so, do, 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 do. <laughs> How many was that? That was three. I'm I know I do the same thing. I just start scooping. I actually was kidding, but yeah, I kind of was about to lose track of it. I'm it in charge of me. making the coffee every night before I go to bed. Oh yeah, coffee scoops. Yeah. Always yeah. err on the side of one more if you lose yeah, count. No, I just pour it back in and start over. Okay, so the half four. Cup. Yep, and I just need a little, and half. a little half on it. <laughs> a little half on it. All right. Okay. Some salt. Well, last time it was half a teaspoon, right? So. So, that was two of these. It was two handshakes. Yep. Two handful, type deals. Not my handful. That'd be too much. I've seen other people in the kitchen do that before. Justin Wilson, you know who that is? Mm -mm. He's a Cajun guy. I think he's dead now, but he was notorious for that. He would cook and just measure in his hand, and then he would grab the he thing got to and be go, an expert at it. He'd say, y'all don't believe me, all huh? And he'd pour it in there, it'd be perfectly level. That's a cool trick. He's awesome. Yeah. So it says to do the yeast next, so how long is that supposed to sit? We also do the olive oil, right? Mm-hmm. How much olive oil do we need? I don't think it's on the back no, of that. No, it's not. Uh, a fourth of a cup. Okay. That's a fourth. Let's make us a little hole. Mm. Sort of like mashed potatoes when you put yeah. your gravy? A well. Why are we doing that? So that we can slowly mix in our dry ingredients. Okay. It's like making biscuits. That's the way I do biscuits. There we go. And now we'll do our yeast. Do we? I'm gonna mix, mix it. it yeah. Okay. This is fast, fast acting. Fast acting. So. Yeah. So that was real quick. Like, yeah, just it's amazing. It's, it acted, and it's it's the microwave of yeasts. Instant, as a matter of fact. All right, professional stir. <laughs> Now, I'm just gonna watch. At some point, um, we studied this recipe really <laughs> hard. At some point, it, it's gonna have to be kneaded. I don't know if you want to take a turn at that. Yeah, or? I'll, I'll do it. Take the ring off. It's getting real. Mm -hmm. If you'll get it incorporated, I'll. I can do that. I'll do the the fun part. You a big pizza person? Like pizza? I do. I, I love pizza. Do you eat it every week? Uh, just about, yeah. It's like Friday nights, pizza night in my house with the kids. Usually order it, don't bake it. But yeah. sometimes we do frozen. <laughs> sometimes I roll out the Pillsbury crust and we make our own pizza and have more fun with it. But never have I done this. But I might now. I mean, yeah. now that I'm... I just got it, it wasn't that hard. Well, it's not over it's yet. It's not over yet. Good point. <laughs> So, whenever uh, whenever we do pizza, mm -hmm. if I do like frozen pizza or we do the, you know, buy the canned dough and roll it out and that kind of stuff, my son cries. <laughs> he does not like it. He doesn't like, like... He says, is this from a place? He wants the real deal. Yeah, and I'm like, no. Oh, I don't want it. He's a little picky though. How old is he? 10. Oh. He's at that age. He's he wants some um, the real pizza pie, yeah. huh? Yeah. Did you tell him it's not delivery? It's disorder. <laughs> I have you used that, that line. You it did that? not work. Okay, let's yeah, see. After we that didn't help. This is actually feeling somewhat like pizza. Shape dough. into a ball. Place into a bowl. Does so. it say how long to knead it? 
It just says until combined, until thoroughly uh, combined. I would say that's thoroughly combined. Well, there, there's, there. we can probably use this bowl. We're just now, I actually it worked there. at a pizza place and they, they told us to do this. Okay. Like fold it in on itself. Uh huh. So that you have the little thing there on well, the bottom. Well, you've got more. And then boom. Okay. Plastic wrap over the top, or what does it plastic say? Plastic wrap and let it do its thing at room temperature for an hour. Room temperature? Mm -hmm. All right. So there we go. Pretty easy. Do you have a pizza stone? I do. Okay. That's awesome. So we're going to let this do its thing. We're going to uh, clean up a little bit because we've made a mess. When we come back, we'll be ready to finish off the pizza and also bake the cookies. Okay. I can't wait. Our pizza dough that we got from Publix is ready uh, and on our board here. Now let me explain what we're doing. We've got a cookie sheet underneath here to use as our surface that we're gonna be able to transport the pizza with. We've got parchment paper. That's what the pizza is actually going to cook on, but underneath it in the oven is a pizza stone that is heating right now in the oven at 400 degrees. My part's done. Now you get to roll no, it out. Now I get to roll it out? Yeah. Okay. And I believe that this is actually enough for two pizzas. Because that looks like a pretty big piece of dough. It might. Do you want to split it in let's, half let's and see that. first? Yeah. Because it's nice and doughy. Yeah, and that's let good. Me add a little more to that. Okay. Just watch me struggle to get this spread out here. How do I? Now you have more. <laughs> what are you doing? That was a setup. I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, I don't I'm either. To... Usually when I, you know, make pizza dough, I... <laughs> <laughs> well, usually when you make pizza dough. Wait a minute, let's rewind the tape. <laughs> she doesn't make pizza dough. Usually when I use um, pizza dough. <laughs> use pizza dough, yes. No, I'm, I need some tips on how to get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm busy. <laughs> you know, come to think of it, I think this is actually supposed to be all one piece. Okay. Oh, look at that. the little bubbles. Okay, we it don't want to over, we don't want to over. I like how she says we. <laughs> we don't want to overwork you it. You don't want to overwork it. I don't want you to overwork it. So. We'll just kind of start by getting it in that yeah. shape. Kind of mash it down. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And I think Amazing. at some point you might have to take over with You're the rolling pin because it does take job. some Fantastic. determination to it really does. get it. You have to convince it. It needs some convincing. Convincing. Yep. Let's see. take out some of that yep. pinned up anger. I but, don't know that I referenced having any of that, uh, but we can see are it. you picking something, we can picking see up it. what I'm putting down? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's the thing about dough a lot of times. It, it wants to go back to its original shape. Mm -hmm. So you roll it out and then it wants to go back. So it you gotta work good, out some of that. Good muscle memory. Ooh, that means our oven's ready for oven's us, huh? Oven's ready, but we are not. No. Uh, one of the other things that we're going to have to do is get our tomatoes ready. This is not as easy as it looks, folks. Not oh, as it easy doesn't as look it easy. Looks. It does not look easy at all. It's, I'm, I'm very apparently struggling. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Okay. These are San Marzano tomatoes. The best. Yeah. So they were recommended for this recipe. I'm trying to get a good technique here for rolling this out. I'm thinking I might be onto something here. Just bear with me. So we're gonna put the dough uh, 
still on the parchment paper. We can Correct. slide it off and put it on okay. the table just to give a little more grip. All right, I got a couple and of these. If that doesn't work, we'll have to come up with another excuse for why I'm <laughs> incapable of getting it rolled out, right? Exactly. Like you said, it does have some quite the muscle memory here. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to slice up some of these tomatoes. This is our going to be our tomato sauce. We don't want these too thick. The can comes with uh, a decent amount of uh, tomato sauce in there, so we'll use some of the chunky parts and the thinner sauce part. Okay. Okay. That's ready. So this is a Neapolitan pizza, which means uh, red and usually brown and white. But with this one, this is more like a margarita pizza, which is red, green, mm. and white. The colors of the Italian flag. Mm -hmm. so we've got some fresh basil we're going to chop up. You like basil? I love basil. Me too. Um, Any fresh herbs are good. Yeah. You know, when you're cooking, adds a lot of extra flavor and yep. a freshness to the taste. And no fat or sugar. Right. Mm -hmm. Most people, well, I won't say most people, but a lot of people, their go-to flavoring is fat, sugar, or salt. Right. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure about what's happening here. That looks all right. That's it's a rustic pizza. That it is. <laughs> There you go. It's a personal pan pizza. Now, earlier we were talking about how you help victims of crime and that type of thing. And, yes. I, and I think that a lot of people probably think you're helping people who were the direct victim of a crime. Mm -hmm. But in some cases, you're helping the family. Absolutely. And uh, although they're still victims, because mm -hmm. they, they suffer a lot in, in the process. So, you know, in, in murder cases, you guys have to deal with that. Yes, we do um, work with the families in any case where there's been a fatality or a loss of life. We absolutely incorporate as much of the immediate family as we can into notifying them of what's going on and giving them a chance to, you know, honor the life of the family member that they've lost. and. Also, in any case where there's a child victim, a juvenile victim, the guardian or the, the parent of that child is technically the, the victim on their behalf. So they okay. help them to exercise their rights. So a lot of times they have to make those decisions. Will this, will this child come to court for this or not? You mm -hmm. know, do they want to participate or not? Um, so we are required to, to notify them and let them as the parent make those decisions and involve the child to whatever extent, you know, it's beneficial to them. Mm -hmm. That's got to be, uh, it's got to be fulfilling, it's got to be rewarding, but it also kind of has to be heartbreaking sometimes. And, and do you take that home with you? Yeah, you know, it's funny because I've been doing, working, doing direct victim services for about eight years now. Mm -hmm. um, before that, I worked with the same population of, of individuals. And, you know, when you tell people what you do, most mm -hmm. of the time people are like, that sounds depressing. You know, <laughs> I used to work in a sexual assault center. I used to work in a domestic violence shelter. And it's mm -hmm. like, you know, and I say, my, my go-to answer is always, well, we all know what's going on out there. At least I'm part of the solution. Right, right. You know, and so, and that is truly how I feel. And I do feel like it's a privilege to be able to work with people going through hard times mm -hmm. and to offer them some sort of support and hope. Right. And it does help you put things in perspective in your own life. But you yeah. do, sometimes you, you take it home, which is one thing that I talk to my staff um, a lot about and the prosecutors in our office that work on some of these more um, traumatizing cases mm -hmm. um, about self-care mm -hmm. and making sure that you are setting good boundaries for yourself yeah. and you know having outlets where you can kind of re rejuvenate yourself. Because right. I was at a training actually yesterday and the pres one of the presenters said, you know, if we all burn out on this work that we're doing, then then there's nobody out yeah. there to do this very important work. So right. take care of yourself. That's a good point. And so yeah, we push that a lot in our office. Like, you know, it's okay yeah. to 
to take breaks and switch it up and do something like this for yeah. a day instead, which is really great, you know? I mean, it really is. So it's all part of the deal. And I don't know what day you're watching this on, because this is, you know, shot way earlier than it's airing. But for us, today is Friday. Friday. Boom. <laughs> so we're happy anyway. Yes. And we're having pizza. Uh -huh. And we're having cookies. I'm going to grab a spoon. So you think I've got that this? That looks great. I mean, enough to, yeah. to start doing. Absolutely. I mean, it's not perfectly round, but you know. I'm going to add just a little bit of base layer sauce. here. And then I'm going to add the ones that I chopped up. What? Probably use about half of those. We don't need all of it. We got enough to make another pizza. Mm hmm. And I will hand you the mozzarella if you want to break off pieces is and that just what put we're, it that's on there. That's what we're supposed to yep. do. Is just break it off. Just real broken up pieces and rustic and just kind of. Throw it on there. Now, obviously, if you want to uh, do your own pizza at home, you don't have to add these exact ingredients. These are just what the recipe calls for. If you put meat on a pizza, you really want to have it pre-cooked. Most meats are not going to cook on the pizza in the amount of time that you're going to have it in the oven. Correct. That looks like enough basil. Mm -hmm. Man, this is gonna be good. Definitely putting enough cheese on here for it to be good. It's my <laughs> favorite part of the pizza. I don't know about y'all, but extra cheese is always a topping mm -hmm. that I order. Yep. And the mozzarella tastes good. I had a piece. Oh, you tested it? Yeah. That's I good. Had to test I was it. wondering if it was okay. Awesome. That looks great. Now, you don't have to use the whole thing. Yeah, I think you do. <laughs> I think that's the yes. rule, right? Yeah, you might as well. I mean, when in Rome. <laughs> Apropos. <laughs> All, right. All right. So we have our cookie sheet right here that we can use to transfer. And hopefully this will work. Oh, yeah. Here we go. You oh, wanna, that looks so good. You want to get the door for me? Let's see how this works. See how you had to shake it? Shake it. All right. All right. All right, so our pizza had to cook a little bit longer mm -hmm. than we wanted to. It says seven minutes and then another two once you, you know. But we found that our mozzarella had so much moisture in it that it was sort of making a pond on our pizza. So we, bit. we drained off the water, the liquid, and put it back in. So it's cooked about 10 minutes, and we actually bumped up the heat to about 500. So we're gonna get it out now. Mm -hmm. Do you wanna do it? Or do you wanna open the oven? I'll open the oven, okay. I'll let you take care of that part. All right, so we're doing the reverse process. Put our Whoa. surface down, pull the parchment, and there we go. Look at that. That, that looks is amazing. A, that is awesome. That is going to be so good. Look at it. It's settling. Oh, yeah, it's it's, mm. it's going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. All right, so let me get my pizza cutter. This Ooh. is the official DC TV 23 pizza cutter. Wow. And these, you know what? We, we do a lot of giveaways. This is the best giveaway we have ever ha had. It cuts perfectly. I've never seen one and like, like that. It puts and all of the weight right there yeah. instead of out here on a handle. So all right. I'll let you try it oh. too. Mm -hmm. So I can try to win one of these myself. Huh? Yeah. I'll hook you up. Awesome. Mm. Do you want to do just do four pieces no. or you want to do eight? No. I, I don't think that'd be. <laughs> we'll do eight. That looks so good. It does. It's it gonna smells be really hot. awesome. Yes, that basil mm -hmm. it makes a big difference. You can smell the, the the basil is the first thing I smell, and mm -hmm. then you smell that pizza dough. All right. Okay, 
It's gonna be really hot. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> do you wanna wait or do you wanna try it now? We can wait until we get the, the cookies in the oven. That's cool. Awesome, so we'll put this aside. We're gonna reset, we're gonna get the cookie dough out and shape it into this weird thing. You'll have to watch to Log. see how we do it. It's like two logs, so we'll be right back and we're gonna have pizza and cookies. We got our dough out of the refrigerator mm -hmm. and the instructions say to use two of each of the colors mm -hmm. to make a log. So we're, we need to alternate colors and put them all together into about a 12 inch long log. So there's one of those. We got two red ones. I feel like I'm playing with Play-Doh, sort of. Yeah, this would be a great activity for kids. It would. Now these brown ones are a little bit more difficult because they had that hot melted chocolate mixed in with them, so they're not quite as cold as uh -huh. the other um, colors, but I'm making it work. And that's just not gonna, <laughs> that's not gonna work. So, what do you think, longer than yeah. that? Is that about 12 that's inches? That's probably about right. That's about right. We don't want them to be. That looks about as long as my shoe, which is about 12, <laughs> 12 inches. inches. So you're gonna let me work with these chocolate ones that are a little harder, <laughs> or a little bit Absolutely. more difficult, I you should have, say. You have way more experience with them, so. The process of making the cookie dough logs included rolling two of each color into a 12 inch log, putting them all together into one large log, making sure to alternate colors, wrap the log in saran wrap, and place in the freezer for a couple of hours to harden. While the dough chilled, we tasted our beautiful Neapolitan pizza. It does look delicious. <laughs> Is that what they do in Italy? Mm -hmm. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. Not too much cheese. Mm -mm. And the tomato is very, very good. Subtle, mm -hmm. just enough. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure I pulled all the cheese off of that slice. <laughs> That's for our uh, non-cheese lovers. Yeah, the dairy sensitive. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. That was very good. What's it called again? The District the Attorney Neapolitan Pizza. pizza. Mm. Speaking nice. of district attorney, when someone is put into a situation where they need your services, how mm -hmm. does that happen? Do they? Do you contact them, or how does that happen? Sure. Um, well, as soon as there's an arrest, um, we start trying to establish contact with victims. Um, they're notified by law enforcement at the time of, of you know, reporting a crime that they have a right to be at the first appearance hearing where the right. defendant um, has a chance to get a bond. So we go to bond hearing every morning. We try to, if there's anyone there, we try to reach out to them at that point. If not, we get their contact information from law enforcement and start trying to call them in the following days. Right. But if all else fails, when we get the actual case in our office, which is about four to six weeks on average from time of arrest, the first thing that that file does is come to us in the victim witness department. Mm -hmm. And the victim advocate reviews the case, reaches out to the victim, tells them that we have a packet of information that we're gonna send them that includes a pamphlet that describes their rights right. and um, a blue form called a victim impact statement that um, they, that's their place to kind of put on paper their feelings about how this crime has affected them, what they want to see happen mm -hmm. um, as part of the criminal justice process and then that goes into the actual file so that every time that prosecutor looks at that case they have in front of them, oh this victim wants this because mm -hmm. you know I my big thing is this is more than charges on a piece of paper. These are people's lives that we're dealing right, with. And right. we like to give, you know, personalize and humanize these case files that are in front of us. So mm -hmm. that's why that victim impact statement is so important so that we can see in their words, even if it's something so simple as, I just want justice to be served or I'll right. do whatever I have to do to, to help hold this person accountable or mm -hmm. I don't want to come to court at all unless I have to. I mean, whatever right. their feelings are, we want to know that so we can work with them to give them a result that we feel like matches that as much as possible. So um, that's sort of how we reach out to them and we let them know that there's an advocate assigned specifically to your case that's sort of like the liaison between you and the prosecutor and we're their person through the rest of the process. So you have a unique position where uh, nobody wants to use your service. 
Right. <laughs> but if they have to, they're mm -hmm. glad that you're there. Oh, yeah. That's what people say all the time. It was so great to meet y'all. I'm sorry under these circumstances, yeah. of course. But, but yes. Um, and that, I mean, honestly, I tell people every time they come in and meet with us, it's very rare that people leave and don't say the exact same thing every time, which is I feel so much better now. Like now that I've met you and I've met the prosecutor and I see there's this team of people that actually right. care that are working on this case. So that's why we facilitate that. You know, if they want to come in and meet with us, we want that. If they want to say, I'd rather not, mm -hmm. I'd rather just move forward and you right. let me know if I get a subpoena, I'll be there yeah. sort of thing. But yeah, it's most people are very grateful that there's, and they don't know. I mean, that's yeah. why most people watching this yeah. will be like, I don't know that if that happens to me, there'll be an advocate assigned specifically to me that does this every day. They're usually thrown into that situation. Yeah, so it's good, it's comforting for them to know that there's somebody that's kind of like on their side, you know, mm -hmm. so. Which is kind of why we're doing this particular show and especially this particular episode mm -hmm. is that a lot of people don't know about victim services mm -hmm. um, until they have to use it or if they have mm -hmm. to use it. So we're glad to give you guys the information mm -hmm. about what's going on in the community and uh, and we're also Could cooking. Pizza. Oh yeah. my gosh, you can't beat that. <laughs> I'm going to continue to eat. Do it. A lot of cheese. <laughs> You did totally steal the cheese off of that other piece. I did. After our dough had thoroughly chilled, we cut it into slices and placed them on a cookie sheet lined with parchment paper. We also added silver sprinkles to half of the cookies and cinnamon sprinkles to the rest. The cookies went into a preheated 350 degree oven for 10 to 12 minutes. Then it was time to eat. We cut our cookies pretty pretty thick. Yeah, we did. Yeah, so we had to keep them in a little bit longer than 10 to, 10 to 12 minutes, probably 15, mm -hmm. 18, something yes. like that. So if you slice them thinner, you'll probably be cooking 10 to 12 minutes at mm -hmm. 350. I think so. So I think we've let these cool a little bit. They're still warm. Because you want warm cookies. Warm What's better cookies. than that, right? Exactly. So The milk? I'm going in. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> my wife actually gave my daughter the rest Last of the milk, of the milk this milk. morning. Kids, I tell you what, mm. that's okay. All right, here we go. All right. Mm. Not bad. I like those little sprinkles on the top. Mm -hmm. Nice touch. Cinnamon sugar on top of mine. Good nice. stuff. All right. So today we cooked District Attorney Neapolitan Pizza and district attorney Neapolitan cookies, many colors, fun activity for the kids. Mm -hmm. Megan, thank you so much for coming in. Now, we have to at least give a little bit of props to your boss. Brian Fortner. Brian Fortner. Yes, he runs an amazing office over there with a lot of great people who work really hard every day, so I'm proud to be a part of that team, and thank you for letting me come and share a little bit about what we do. And Absolutely. Hopefully people will know that if you ever need anything, even if there's not a case yet, or if you just have a need as a crime victim, you can always call us up. That's awesome. Show up, whatever you need. Cool. So we're going to eat the rest of these cookies. All of them. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to make these recipes at home for yourself. That is servings for this month, and we'll see you next month.